Sponsored by Battle Tribe. For awesome stickers, patches, t-shirts, art, and more, check out our Etsy store, Battle Tribe. Hey everybody, it's Matt Rendar. Just wanted to make a quick video about doing campaigns, my ideas and um, aspirations because every war gamer out there worth his salt wants to do a campaign, having battles linked for a purpose and a narrative and a, a story of a war getting waged and um, taking part in all the different tabletop battles and games. It's just a really cool thing, but it's also a very um, daunting undertaking. So these are just some of the ideas I had. I made up a small campaign system. I'm getting ready to run for just a weekend, about three days. But um, a concept I've kind of used in campaigns in the past and into the future. And let me know in the comments what you think about it. So um, we'll first start off. I'm doing a campaign, um, doing the, the Sudan, the 18, 18, late 1890s with the British and the Egyptians versus the Mahdi in um, Sudan. So it's a really interesting time period, really um, dynamic, wild uh, time that game. A lot of cool units, you know, from camels. Um, cavalry to infantry to um, maximum machine guns and different stuff. Uh, it's a really cool period. So I'm using the black powder rules. So like starting off, I got, you know, Blood in the Nile's got a lot of rules and stats and everything. Done some research and go strong into the desert. It was a great book. A lot of cool history of the period, maps and, and uh, photographs. Really, really cool stuff. So that definitely a pickup if you want to read up on the, the, the period. So a lot of cool different um, stories and uh, history about these the battle and the war on its own. So I'm going to be using the black powder rules. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I like it because the older I get, the sim more simplistic I want. And I, I like how it's a, a plug and play kind of system. And depending, there's special rules in it that you can adhere to the different periods so I play American War of Independence, Civil War, Napoleonics, um, the Zulu Anglo-Zulu War, and the Sudan, and all those periods. Use this, I use the same rules with different rules added on to it to make it a little, a little more flavor. But it's great because you can play massive games in just a couple hours instead of spending a whole weekend just to get to turn two. You can finish a game. I've played giant games in like two and a half hours. So the crux of um, my ideas for a campaign is this game called uh, Samurai Swords. It originally came out Milton Bradley Game Master Series as uh, Shogun. Really cool game. So this is my copy of it. You can see originally sold the Shogun. And then I got re-released as Kessel or Kessen later on, I, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. But this board game, absolutely love it, was um, the crux, the main idea, the building blocks for my campaign. So the way the game works is you have different factions you're it's feudal japan and you're you're fighting over you know the the whole the, the island of japan and the surrounding islands and stuff so each player has three armies and you build resources and you you um, build your armies up and when any your army counter you have three counters uh standard bearers that represent your army on the field when they bump into another army you play a battle so i was like that's a great idea for the campaign I want to run. So nice and simple. You have three armies. If they're just, you know, they take damage, you keep track of them. You know, it's three armies. It's e easy to keep track of. Um, and if they get destroyed, they get destroyed. If your armies all get eliminated, the other player wins and gains all your provenances, etc. So I thought that, you know, nice and simple. So what I did was for our game, I um, did this map and move some of the, these are my command miniatures. The, um, we did a map of the Sudan from the thing. So originally when I did a campaign map, I did a hex, hex and square system, but like I've, I was like, you know, it's going to probably get bogged down with movement. So you're going to spend lots of turns just moving like in the middle of nowhere on hexes and sort of, uh, squares. So in the latest, uh, issue of, uh, War Games Illustrated, um, issue 423, Jervis Johnson has an awesome little campaign system, strategy and guile. And um, he did was he took a map for Napoleonics and he just did a did all the important parts where the armies or divisions can move. So you don't have any of this wasted time like you're getting two points 
and you can see the reds are cities and they're worth more victory points for control. So like I pretty much stole this idea. It's a really cool idea. So I did the same for this. So here it is, you have um, the Sudan, you have the capital, I believe, uh, Khartoum, Khartoum. And so the British players will have three armies up there and they'll start to move and the Mahdi will be, have their three armies hidden through here. So on the map, it's easy to see, you know, you have the directions you can go. There are cities that are connected by waterways, so you can use a movement to get there or there. Um, you have city, this is uh, the main city and then there's other towns and cities and stuff. So those are worth one victory point. So it would all be hidden in movement. The game master will look, they'll make their movements and you know, they bump into each other in battle. So that was the map that I drew for that. So pretty much I broke down the campaign into a couple phases. Let's see if this makes any sense. So phase one is army movement, army hidden movement. So the players will have the army generals of the, each team will have a black and white copy of the map and do their movements off, you know, hidden from the other player. So the only rules are is if an army moves into a city and they capture it, they have to, they will be automatically revealed and be placed on the, the board for, you know, uh, people to view all the time. You know, that represents the people in the town, spies, scouts, everybody in the world, everybody getting the word out that a large army has a mass in that area. So everybody starts hidden when they move into this and they become, once they become, you know, uh, attacked or spotted by scouts or enter a city, you know, there's no more hidden movement for that army uh, counter anymore. So the first first um, first turn phase of the campaign, each turn is everybody moves one space. You move one one location to one location. You can use the rivers. You know, there's some ways you can, that move really fast. Um, you do that. The other option instead of moving is you can have your army. Your army can hold its location. If they hold their location, they're set and set up. They set up an ambush, so that will be a benefit down the road if they if an enemy army bumps into them. So, hold for ambush or make a movement. So you do all three armies. You write down your hidden location. The game master looks at them. If anybody bumps into them, armies will be revealed. Phase two: the scout checks. So these armies have scouts, horseback, on camel, etc. What the player will do is, we'll give an example, this army will have one scout check per turn or two. The, the player, he goes, you know, I want to do a scout check at any position on the map. He points to it. On a dice roll of three plus, the game master tells him in secret if there's, he notices, he sees an enemy army there. If he rolls less than a three plus on a six sided dice, there's uh, nothing to be found. And if there is an army there, they eluded them or they just didn't spot them. So that's like a cool way of putting the feels out to try to gauge where your uh, enemy is. Number three phase, engagement. You check the map to see if any armies have bumped into each other. So if you do a hidden movement from 32 to eight, uh, 9 and the, the Mahdi have moved from 18 to 9, you've, you're both revealed and you fight a battle. If you both bump into each other, it's a meeting engagement. Rules to follow later. If you move into a, a location that an army is prepared for you, you play the ambush scenario. So pretty much um, the, uh, the attacker, uh, the, the ambushing army can, can set up on all three board edges as deployment kind of surrounding you. So that's a bit of a benefit for setting up an ambush. So that is it. Before now fighting the battle. So you fight the battle, so it's either a meeting engagement or an ambush. The next thing it based on your movement and how it worked out, the next part is you check the weather. So nothing crazy. Just try to keep the campaign a little simple. D6 roll on a one, there's a sandstorm. If there's a sandstorm, the battle, there's an it's neg one to shooting and command for the first two turns of the battle. That is it. Victory conditions. Um victory conditions will be figured out. Um, during the battle, but whoever wins gets one victory point and the other army withdraws. Then both armies have to check for any units from your army that have been uh, routed or destroyed. You have to roll on a table to see what happens. 
So checking on the status of your units after the battle. Any units that were battled, I mean, routed or destroyed, you roll D6 form. On a 1-2, the unit's destroyed and out of play for the game for the rest of the turn. So that unit, battalion, regiment of cavalry, they're gone forever. If you roll 3 to a 4, the unit is fatigued. So the next time they fight a battle, they're at a neg 1 to shooting in close combat for the whole game. And then after, if they survive that battle, then they're back up to full strength. If you roll 5 or 6, the unit recovers at full strength, and they're unfazed by their last defeat in their last battle. Um, if you win a battle, you get one victory point, and your commander of that um, brigade and division, their um, staff rating goes up by one. It can never go more than a 10. So you keep rinsing and repeating from troop movement, army movement phase, to uh, scout phase, to engagements, and to keep going until all three um, armies are destroyed of the enemy and, or you run out of time. Anybody involved in the campaign that falls off, their, their units are destroyed if you're doing like a multiplayer campaign, and um, that is it. So victory conditions are determined when, you, when you're, you've had your fill and you've completed or you know one side's been destroyed. Victory points are any capitals, there's two victory points. Any cities that are in control are uh, one victory point, and every battle you win is one victory point. Nice and simple. I'd love to hear what you guys think, but um, I think the simpler, the better. The second thing, too, is, I didn't know if I mentioned, but if, um, let's say, an army moves into a city to capture it, you have to roll on a, what is it? I think it's a, capturing a city is on, on a three dice roll of a three plus. So even though you just move there, you don't capture it. You have to see if you're able to uh, do it. So a dice roll three plus, the city's captured. Then the army's allowed to continue moving and that city will stay in control, control of that, um, the last army that was there and captured it until another army attempts to unprotected. So, and then for like game masters and narrative purposes, if you, you know, if you fight in a built up area, you can do a lot more buildings on the table, obviously open desert, you do open desert. So that is it. So I'd love to hear what you guys think about this, uh, Sudan black powder, uh, campaign I'm going to run. And I will definitely do a video of when we play it just to give uh, an overview. I'll do some small battle reports on the different fights, but it's, uh, Friday evening, a full day Saturday, and a part day Sunday. So I'm, I'm estimating we'll probably get about three three games in, maybe four, you know. So, but I definitely want to have like a kind of like a clear victor at the end of it. So I think it'll be fun. And campaigns are always something fun to strive for. So that is it. Everybody have a great week. Happy gaming. And like and subscribe.